Welcome, everybody, to another week here on the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. It's Monday, and it's April the 29th, right here on the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Podcast. And I'm joined today, I am Ross Benjamin, by the way, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues, Mr. Chip Cherimbus and Mr. Doug Upstone. And yes, you guys are esteemed colleagues. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to clarify that. Uh, in any event, we're going to be talking some NBA playoff action for Monday evening, and uh, we're going to be covering all three games. We'll have some free picks for you. Just a friendly reminder, folks, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, don't know what you're waiting for. It's absolutely free. No strings attached. No hidden agenda. Just click on that subscribe button right beneath you. And if you're on your uh, PC, you'll see a WC logo. That serves the same purpose. Click that. And uh, you'll be on board and take one step further, even if you have subscribed already or you're new. And if you have subscribed and you haven't done this, go on your YouTube settings and click on the alert notification bell for the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. And you'll be notified immediately upon any of our future podcasts, which are five times a week going up right here on our great channel. Chip, how are you? I'm great as long as the NBA, they can, maybe they can stretch the season out to September because these playoffs have been great for us, Ross. We had our, another megabuck play with Indiana on Sunday and have a huge release tonight, Monday night, April 29th. And we're looking to uh, just continue as the beat goes on as, uh, who's that, Sonny and Cher used to say. But, uh, you know, <laughs> things are great. Looking forward to um, each and every day. There you go. What's uh, any... Uh... His, history to talk about on this. I specific? do. I have, this is a great day for a guy by the name of Joe Adcock. You might remember right. him, big power yeah. hitter from Milwaukee. As a matter of fact, in 1957 and 58, he played in the World Series. There was a pennant from 57 when they played at the Yankee Stadium. But in 1953, this day, Joe Adcock was the first player ever to hit a ball into the center field bleachers at the Polo Grounds. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Polo Grounds, it's where Willie Mays was able to make that great catch because it's 486 feet to dead center with the 10-foot screen. And the only other people that decided to do that was Jim Hickman and Lou Brock. But guess what? He wasn't outdone because the next year he came to Ebbets Field, hit four home runs and a double off the top of the wall, which set a record at the time with 18 total bases in the game, the four consecutive homers. And last but not least, I have to give this to you, and I thank you for the time, Ross. I really do. In 1959, May 29th, it was Joe Adcock that broke up Harvey Haddock's no-hitter and perfect game in the bottom of the 13th. But the anomaly about this is he only got credit for a single because the man on first base touched second and then cut across the field and went into the dugout. And you may remember this guy. His name was Henry Aaron. So that's my Joe Adcock for this day, December 29th. Yeah, Hammer and Hank says it's, uh, you know, I don't need to run the bases. No, as a matter of fact, he went, he um, lobbied to be commissioner of baseball at one time. And I'm thinking, here's a guy that doesn't even know you have to touch the bases. And he wants to be a commissioner. So, yeah, you know, that well, wasn't going to work out. Some uh, history there, folks, for, uh, for those of you, most of you out there, I would say, that have no recollection of Ebbets well, Field or the Polo Grounds. Ross, Ross, I was going to school, and I remember I was in, like, the fifth grade, and um, and he froze up. Done, and you'd never get the chance to see that again. You'll never see that record broken. I can guarantee you that. Repeat that real quick, Chip, because you froze up. He went up 12 the perfect innings. Who's and that? In the bottom of the 13th, after a Henry Aaron walk, Joe Adcock hits a home run. And then when he circled the entire bases, his run counted. I'd rather he was called, you know, there was two men on his back, and they won the game by one run. All right. There you go. Bit of history there for Mr. Chip Cherimbus. Well, a little longer remember. than usual, but Joe Adcock, uh, or Adcock or Adcock? Joe Adcock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big power hitter played for 16 years in the World Series twice. He was a, he was a big, and you know he was overshadowed by Eddie Matthews, Lou Burdett, and of course Hank Aaron. So um, he didn't quite get the notoriety he should have. Today he'd be a mega mega star. There you go. So uh, Doug, I, I don't know how you could top that. Boy. <laughs> well, I, 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 I can I can underwhelm it for sure. But yeah. the uh, but the one thing that uh, that now I, I don't know back in those days, but uh, how would you like to have had the uh, the Brewers on the run line with that game, uh, hitting in the 13th inning. Uh, well, that would have been interesting. That would have oh, yeah. been really tough because they were the Braves. Oh, the Braves, sorry. Yeah, yeah. the Braves, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, but th that would have been an interesting one. So, well, myself, uh, 
Which all of Chip's good news. Mine wasn't so good this weekend. I had a lousy weekend. I'm going to be the first person to admit it. I just I just had a poor weekend across the board. And uh, last night I spent two hours going through every single game, okay, to see what I would do differently. And you know what? Not that much, okay. There just was a lot of bad luck. If you saw the uh, Nashville uh, Nashville Vancouver game yesterday. Saw how that ended up. Had a couple of uh, top bullpens give up giveaway games. Uh, so it was just it was one of those weekends. It happens to everybody that's ever done Absolutely. been in this business or ever bet for more than six months. So it, I guess it was my turn. So what's today? Today's Monday. So we look to turn everything around and just completely reverse it this upcoming week. So uh, let's say yesterday was it was a good exercise, honestly, to go over all of those games and to really you know. Uh, I'd say drill down and to and to do some stuff. So I'm glad I did it, and I uh, it made me feel a lot better just about what went on. So here we go, new week. Yeah, it's uh, you know we beat on our chest when we win, folks, but uh, we're also transparent when we lose, and nobody wins all the time. Anybody who gets on video or talks to you on the phone or is on the radio that says they had 70, 80 percent of their picks for the entire year, um, you should automatically tune them out. Because right. uh, they're lying through their teeth. In any event, uh, I had a good weekend. Um, right. Again, uh, you know, my NBA just continues to roll. I've now hit, I think, seven in a row in the NBA playoffs. Good. Uh, 10 and 0 with my NBA totals in my last 10 NBA playoff picks so far, postseason picks, I should say, uh, 15 and 4. Uh, going back to 2022, I'm now up to 91 and 50 with my NBA postseason picks, uh, which is good for 64%. So a lot of good things happening with me over at gamblersworld.net where uh, you can get my NBA playoff package chips as well for just 195. It'll take you right through the end of uh, the NBA finals. So uh, again, folks, I can't get much hotter than I am right now. And uh, again, going back to March 19th, my basketball picks overall uh, on a run of 48 and 17. I mean, it's just I, like Doug used to say when he was hot, he would say, I just can't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. I know one guy who's ready to explain things, and that's Mr. Cherimbus. And he's going to talk about the Lakers in Denver. And right now, the L.A. Lakers are a seven point favorite. The total in this game is either. Uh, 216 through 217, no matter, uh, it just depends on where you're looking. Yeah. Uh, Chipper, the Lakers stay, stayed alive with their win at home to force a game five. Um, could they stay within this number of seven or possibly even pull off the outright upset tonight? Well, that's what I say. Could they possibly even win it? That's what I was yeah. wondering. Um, yeah. You know, this, this Laker team, uh, they scored 72 of the 119 points inside the paint. Um, Anthony Davis was totally dominant in game four, um, 25 points, 23 rebounds. Does he come back with this again? I don't know. I think there's going to be an adjustment that's going to be made by uh, the Nuggets as far as the interior defense, which is going to open up the outside shooting. I'm looking for the Lakers actually to start making some points, some shots. They shot 52% the last game. They have, they are developing confidence here. I mean, they've led this team at half in every game, haven't they? And, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, they could be two and two at this time. They're three and one. LeBron said, John, LeBron James, I believe his name is. He says he believes they still have a chance, even though they're oh and 151 when teams are down three to zero. But I think the, the Lakers here, um, Jamal Murray hasn't been shooting all that well. Um, you know, he's at 38% for the, for the, this little mini tournament they're playing right here. And, I don't know. I, I think the Lakers might be the side. I, I'd be willing to take the points in this one. Uh, it's do or die for them. And, you know, Finally getting that win, finally getting that W. You know how it happens in baseball so often when a team's losing, 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 then they finally put one up on the board, and then they start playing better. And maybe the Lakers are able to keep this one close. I mean, we know on paper that they just don't match up. They don't have the depth that the Nuggets have. And the Nuggets, I think both teams are going to run the floor. So I'm going to take the Lakers. I think it most likely goes over as well. All right. So uh, there you have it. Uh, Chipper takes uh, the Lakers plus seven in game five to keep, uh, well, not to necessarily to keep the series alive, but right. to stay inside the number. You never know, though. You know, Doug, the last time they played in Denver uh, in game two, the Lakers uh, deserved a better fate. They blew a 20-point lead, and they lost by two at the buzzer. Uh, what say you, my friend? 
Yeah, and this one, you know, the I think this is, you know, everybody's most people I'm reading about are really talking about the Lakers here. I'm I'm gonna talk more about Denver because Denver now knows that Minnesota has already uh, swept their series against Phoenix. The last thing that they want to do is play more additional games against the Lakers. Okay. I think they're going to be fully focused here. As Chip mentioned, they had lost four and they've been they trailed at halftime in four straight games. I, you know, I, I guess I question, are the Lakers really playing that much better or is just Denver kind of bored just beating the Lakers time after time on this one? Uh, it, the, the, the line on this game to me is a little, it's it's a tough one, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so I'm looking at the total. And the total, first thing I noticed is in game one, the total was 227. Now we're down to 216 and a half, 217. That's a, that's a dramatic drop. Now, if you look at the last 10 times these teams played, is that they have gone over 216 and a half eight of those times. So looking at that, Lakers as road underdogs, six and a half to 12 points, 16 and six over Nuggets. At home, revenging a straight up loss as a road favorite, 16 and four over. I'm going to go over 216 and a half on the, uh, for this game five. Well, it sounds like Chipper agrees with you. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Chip. And well, we're really bucking a trend here because of the last 10 meetings have only gone over three times. But uh, like you said, this number has been dramatically dropped. And, um, you know, it's who knows what's going to happen in these playoffs. I mean, a 10 point differential in the total. Um, it worked out for us last time. We'll see if it does again today. Yeah. Um, again, uh, they play, they played to the under six of their last seven in yeah. games played in Denver since the start of last year. But if you look at those games, like Doug pointed out, um, you know, those goals, yeah. Yeah, goals were much higher yeah. and the, the uh, combined scores were much higher than the, or on average than the two sixteen and a half. and um, I have a big totals play on this game tonight. So I, I really have to reserve comment uh, any further than that. You can get it right now over at gamblersworld.net for 35 bucks. And uh, folks, if you don't win, you don't make a profit. On my pick tonight, we will credit your account back, the exact amount of your purchase price, whether that be $35 or any credit that applies to your pick, uh, whatever you took out of your pocket to pay for that selection. Um, I guarantee that if I, I don't win, I don't make a profit, we'll credit your account back. Okay, let's get to Doug's game. And uh, that's the Oklahoma City Thunder and the New Orleans Pelicans. Boy, oh, boy. Um the Pelicans in tough here, down 3-0, um, not looking very good. They can't score very well right now. Uh, I mean, they scored 92 points or fewer in each of the first three games of the series. Doug, what say you here? Yeah, and this one, you know, Oklahoma City, you know, it, interesting how, you know, how they performed. You know, their first game, they appeared to be very uh, nervous and almost apprehensive, you know, being not, not only being in the playoffs, but then as a number one seed. But then the last two games has kind of figured it out, and they shot 48 and 47 percent respectively in their last two games, uh, and that's still short of their average of 49 and a half percent on the season. Now New Orleans uh, on defense in the last two games, they look like they were playing four on five, uh, just wide open shots for Thunder shooters all over the place, and then when they would actually try and uh, guard somebody on the perimeter, that's backdoor cut, guys wide open. So. You know, there's just no physical presence inside for Oklahoma City without Zion Williamson. And it and it just really shows up, you know, on the offensive end. You just mentioned how many uh, points they're not scoring. But I still don't think this will be an easy game because one of the things of, of any team when you go through a growing process is you, you know, they, they passed their first test. They improved in the second game. They went on the road. They won in a hostile environment. Now you got to close out a series. I don't think it's that's necessarily an easy game. I think you know the the we, we saw what the Lakers did, and if you follow hockey, there was a couple of uh, teams that also that were down uh, 0-3 that uh, extended series. So I think this would be a tougher game. And I know Ross doesn't like this, but I'm going to go with the money line on this one. And the the biggest reason as to why is that uh, I'd rather pay some extra juice in this case rather than bring into a spread that I just feel is a, is a little bit too high in this one. So the money line right now is uh, it's either minus 190 or minus 195. So to me, it's under 200. So it's not like having two losses in this case. Plus, I like the fact that the Pelicans, they're on a two and eight straight up run at home, and they are one and eight straight up after scoring 105 points or less in two straight games. 
I'm going to go the Thunder on the money line to wrap up the series tonight. All right. So Oklahoma City minus 195. And uh, Jesse's going to say, Ross, how come you put the restraints on me, but you don't on Doug? Well, I, you know, I didn't see this coming. You won't catch me betting the game at minus 195 ever. Um, but not to say that Doug's not right. And I don't mean any disrespect. That's just not my my uh, my style. So, the Chipper, uh, is your style to ever think about a money line over 150? No, no, I very rarely, I very rarely do it. Um, baseball, 130, one, maybe 140. But, um, you know, in football, I'd, I'd lay it instead of laying, say, a, a point and a half, I'd lay up yeah. the dollar 25, something around that area. But um, for the most part, um, it takes two games to get back if you don't get there. And that bothers yeah. me. And everybody, a lot of times people think, and that it's just, oh, this is such a heavy favorite. It's just a walkover. And, uh, you know, it's this is sports and uh, crazy things happen out there. But uh, I think that, don't get me wrong, I think Oklahoma City, aside from Boston, those are the two best teams I've seen. And I'm very impressed with this Oklahoma City, not only on offense, but on defense. But they're hungry. It's no fluke what they've done this year. And um, New Orleans comes into this game 0-3. But Willie Green, like LeBron James, says they still have a shot. He's right. They have one more game to play. You know, it's like eating mushrooms. They're all edible once. And <laughs> I'm telling you right now that Saints may be in trouble. And the Pelicans may be in trouble here. They're averaging 40% from the field, um, only 27% from three-point range. And in the last three games, they've scored 85, 92, and 92. I think this game goes under the total. I think the injuries to New Orleans, which they have a few, has decimated their offense more than anything. And they know that they can't match basket for basket with the Thunder. They have to come out and play defense. Like, um, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Doug said um, they had so many open shots and so many free shots. I think they're going to have to tighten down on that. And that's the only shot New Orleans has to, to even keeping it close here. But I think this game stays under the total. Um, it's on a four and four for um, the Thunder. They're not as comfortable as they would be at home. I'm playing the game under the total. Okay, so Chip has a lean toward uh, this game going under the total. Um, and uh, Doug's pick, our official pick, it pains me to say this, Oklahoma <laughs> City minus 195. You know, I, I look at this game, and I do have an opinion here. Uh, it's not going to be a premium pick, but, you know, this is, uh, like I said, uh, Chipper brought it up uh, again. Uh, they've scored 92 or less in all three games of the series. Mm -hmm. On top of that, since 2004, there's been 18 times in which a team has been down 3-0 um, and scored less than 100 points in each of their first three games of the series. And in addition to being an underdog of three and a half or greater, in 17 of those 18 times, the underdog has scored – um, less than 100 points. So uh, right now, New Orleans team total is 101 and a half. And I, I am going to go under New Orleans team total of 101 and a half. And again, Doug, I know it bodes well for you if that occurs, right? So I hope you win. I just, you know, matter of principle with me. Uh, right. But I, I like New Orleans under uh, 101 and a half, their team total. All right, let me get to my game and then we can wrap things up and we'll get uh, Doug and Chipper's opinion here, the Celtics at the Heat, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time tonight. Celtics at 10.5 point favorite to total 203.5. You know, um, I used the Celtics as a free pick the last time around in game three, and I'm not going to shy away from it again. Um, yeah, You might be surprised to know out there that the Miami Heat have been an under a home underdog 11 times this year. They've gone 0-11 straight up and 1-10 and against the spread as a home underdog this year, losing by an average of 13.5 points per game. And that includes uh, their game three loss to uh, Boston as a 10-point dog. They were blown out 104 to 84, and you can make a case that game wasn't even as close as the 20-point um, final score uh, would indicate. Uh, they've been held to less than 100 points in six of those 11 losses as a home underdog this year. The Celtics, on the other hand, 6-0 straight up in ATS. And their last six this year is an away favorite of 4.5 to 15.5 when they're facing an opponent uh, coming off a loss by 10 or more. 
and they won those six games by 21 points per game. Here's a betting angle for you, folks. Any NBA playoff away favorite of six and a half or greater like the Celtics are, and they're coming off an away favorite of six and a half or greater ATS win like the Celtics are. They've gone 10 and 0 straight up and 9 and 1 against the spread since 2009. Uh, and the average line in those 10 games, 10.8. And uh, the favorites won those games by an average of 16.4 points per game. Doug and Chip, the Celtics seize control of the series tonight with an emphatic win. I'm taking the Boston Celtics. I'm laying the points on the road, minus 10 and a half over Miami. Doug? Yeah, the, uh, the my, my only concern I have with this is that Boston sometimes cavalier attitude about some of these games, uh, like game two, for example, and you know, and other times throughout the course of the season. So uh, in this case, the one, one minus one ninety or ninety five is not too rich for me, but ten and a half points is for a road favorite, even as team as good as Boston. So I'm going to go a different uh, different direction on this one. Uh, Porzingis, his over under is fifteen and a half points. Uh, on the season, he averaged uh, 20.1 points per game on the road. In three games against the Heat, he has scored uh, at least uh, – regular season games. He scored at least 17 points each time. And in Celt the Celtics' two wins in this series, he had 18 uh, in, two, in the two wins. Now, where wh I think why the number is a little bit lower is that in game two, he only had six points. So that, that at least to me, because uh, what kind of uh, attitude does Boston bring? and or the other element that comes into play with the total being lower, maybe what you're saying is absolutely correct, Ross, that Boston just comes in and blows them out again. And then Porzingis, Porzingis along with other starters, just don't get that many minutes. So at 15 and a half, but I'm willing to take it. I'm going to go over 15 and a half points for Porzingis in game number four. There you go. Uh, Krista, Kristaps Porzingis Kristaps. over. Uh, 15 and a half points in game number four. Um, hopefully Jimmy Butler keeps his mouth shut for <laughs> Miami fans sake before the game starts. I don't know if you saw his interview just before the game started in game three, but he uh, didn't have anything nice. He was sick of hearing about the Boston Celtics, etc. cetera. But uh, Chipper, I noticed a big number to lay on the road, Yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm willing to do so, but I interested to hear your take. Well, you know, this Miami team covered only 16 games at home the whole year. You said, well, the horrible record they had as underdogs at the home. And by the way, I misspoke on the Laker-Denver game. This is the series where the over has only covered three of the last 10 meetings. And, you know, the last time they played in Miami during the regular season, the total was 225. Now – it's 203. I think the odds maker and the bookmaker is not giving you a break here. I think he's telling you that this Miami team is so decimated. They cannot score. They will not put points on the board. They've got four or five guys that are down or not can't contribute at all. I think this game stays under the total. Uh, Boston, of course, can light up the basket. We've seen that before. But how about that game where Miami just smothered them and kept them from getting their shots off? I mean, when I saw that, I, I actually said, you know, maybe the Celtics are beatable. But they returned to form last time out. So, um, But Miami's only chance here is to slow it down and to play the kind of defense that they usually play. they got great coaching, and I think he's going to try and keep this one a low-scoring game. I'm going to play Miami and Boston Celtics under the total. All right. So, uh, again, Boston played terrific defense in the last game. Uh, Doug, your point is well taken because at times, especially down the final stretch of the season, uh, Boston seemed like they were just showing up and thinking they could just uh, uh, put their uniform on, enter the floor, and uh, they, we should hand them a decisive win. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that game two is a wake-up call, and I'm going to stick by my guns there. Uh, I was just wondering maybe if you entertained the thought of uh, using – Boston minus 550 on the money line at season. <laughs> I, 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 it, I did contemplate it, but I just, you know, I just, but then I just thought, you know. No, I'm no, just no. joking, folks. I'm just joking out there. I'm giving Doug a hard time. Anyway, all right. So our official picks. Uh, we are going with the Boston Celtics minus 10 and a half over the Miami Heat. That's from me. Uh, Mr. Uh, Upstone, he says, take the Oklahoma City Thunder. Minus 195. That's correct, folks. Minus 195. And if he loses this game, he's fired. 
uh, minus 195 over the New Orleans Pelicans. And Mr. Trimbus, he says the L.A. Lakers stay inside the number and don't be shocked if they don't get the outright upset tonight. So the L.A. Lakers plus the seven, those are our free picks for Monday, April 29th. I'll be back tomorrow morning with uh, Sean Higgs and Jesse Shule. Back Wednesday with Sean Higgs and Jesse Shule. Uh, Doug and Chipper will be with me on possibly on Thursday. There's a chance, folks, we won't have a show on Thursday because it's a possibility, depending on what the results happen, we could have three NBA games or zero NBA games. And there's only four games in Major League Baseball on Thursday, and they all go early. So it's hopefully these guys will be back with me, or maybe we'll devise a plan and come up with something different. And then Friday is our live show at 1 p.m. Eastern time with Jesse and Sean, and that's your opportunity to chime in with all your questions and comments. Great, great show last Friday, and I thank you folks for all chiming in. I think we set a record in terms of views on our live show last Friday, so very pleased with that. Don't forget to give us a like, folks. Just a small token of your appreciation for the time, work, and effort that we put into bringing you a quality podcast each and every day. And also, our theme is, has been is still and will continue to be. We want to make you a smarter sports better today than you were yesterday. For Chip Cherimbus, Doug Upstone, and Ross Benjamin, take care and God bless, folks.